name is Lauren. I'm a registered nurse, and I used to believe that vaccines were the greatest advancement in modern medicine. I used to believe that the adverse effects were nearly non-existent until my own children were injured by vaccines. Almost every parent is pro-vaccine until it's their child who's harmed. It's time that I tell my story and quit allowing the opinions of others to intimidate me into remaining silent. Vaccine injury is not rare. My first child was vaccinated on the recommended schedule, and to my knowledge at the time, she had no adverse effects. A few years later, when, I, um, when questioning vaccines became more mainstream, I started looking into things on my own. Um, I found out that the rotavirus vaccine can cause an infection. In 2008, just a few weeks after my oldest child received the rotavirus vaccine, she was hospitalized with an infection. Was never told by her doctors that a vaccine could be blamed for her illness. And by the time that I found out, it was too late for vaccine court. I still believe that the risk of vaccines were worth the benefits and I continued to vaccinate my children, but on a delayed schedule. In 2015, I had to put my children in daycare while I was working and going to school. And in Mississippi, children are required to be up to date on vaccines to attend school or daycare, as there's no religious or um, personal exemption. So I took my children to receive just enough vaccines so that they would be considered compliant. Over the next few days, my son had a fever that, that reached 104 degrees. Over the next few weeks, my once happy one-year-old turned into a completely different kid. At daycare, he would sit and stare into space. He showed no interest in toys or other children. He would cry inconsolably at times. During that time, he continued to have fevers off and on of 100 to 103 degrees. I knew something wasn't right. I took him to the doctor several times over and over and was told that he must have a virus. Then I received a phone call from the daycare that he'd been having inconsolable crying spells, followed by falling asleep in the floor for several hours and that um, something wasn't right and that I should come and get him. I took him to the doctor again and was told again that he probably just had a virus. He screamed that entire night and the next day I spent four hours trying to console him while he writhed, thrashed, and flung his head back, arching his head back over and over. He wouldn't eat, he wouldn't interact, and I felt like no one would help me. I finally called the doctor's office and let them know that we were coming in. After the doctor saw what was going on, he sent us to Lobonner Children's Hospital in Memphis. We spent over a week in Lobonner. On our third day there, my son would not make eye, eye contact. He couldn't talk, he couldn't walk, and he spent the whole day thrashing, screaming, arching his back, throwing his head back over and over. He wasn't doing that. He was just lying there, um, staring at the ceiling. He was treated for encephalitis of unknown origin. I was afraid to mention his recent vaccines to the doctors because I thought I would just be blown off. I felt guilty for going against my instinct and having him vaccinated. Thankfully, my son made a full recovery. Follow-up visit, I worked up the nerve to ask his doctors if his illness could have been related to his vaccines. They all agreed that it was very likely that vaccines were responsible for my son's illness, and they were prepared to write him a medical exemption until they found out that we lived in Mississippi. In Mississippi, a doctor's word is not good enough. Doctors of Mississippi patients are required to send a written request to the State Department of Health 
and the requests are denied or granted by a doctor who's never laid eyes on the child. Many doctors receive backlash from the health department for writing exemptions that don't meet a small list of conditions that they feel warrants an exemption. Even though his reaction fell well within those guidelines, his Tennessee doctors were too intimidated by that policy to write him an exemption. It took six months of jumping through hoops to finally obtain an exemption for my son. While we were waiting for his exemption, he was kicked out of daycare twice and forced by the health department to receive further vaccines in order to return. As if what we'd been through wasn't enough, months later, while I was looking at his bears report and his shot records, I noticed that something didn't look right. According to his bears report and his shot records, the vaccine that he was given before he ended up in the hospital were the DTaP, the MMR, and the Kenrix. The Kenrix is a combination vaccine that contains DTaP and polio. So not only was my son given a vaccine meant for a four-year-old, he was given two doses of the same vaccine. I went to the health department where he received his shots with his records and asked to speak with a nurse. And I just wanted to know why I hadn't been contacted about the error. I was treated horribly and told that vaccines never hurt people. On this slide, he was given a DTaP, a Kenrix, and an MMR. Okay. No, he's got to be four to have a Kendrick because it is a booster. Right. And it is a DTaP and a polio is right. what that is. Right. Now, it won't hurt him. Well, it did hurt him. I mean, it won't. It, how did it hurt him? He can't even fly it. Not from that shot he didn't. Really? No. Did not from that? that? No, definitely not. Okay. Now, that's... Well, that's, he has a medical exemption now. From the... He doesn't have to take the Kendrick when he, he gets four. Have to take and I just, I just now found out that he was given the wrong one. Well, now the vaccines will not hurt him. He'll run some fever and he'll be a tender. Vac vaccines do hurt people. They hurt people badly. Say it. I mean, but that's, a, but, that's but an argument for another day. Okay. Okay. You're right. That's an argument for another day because you're what we call lay people and we're nurses. I'm a nurse too, actually. This is the way that parents of vaccine injured children are routinely treated by the medical community. Like our concerns are not legitimate and frankly, like we're crazy. This is why I want you to hear my story and the stories of so many other parents with similar stories. I want you to know that vaccine injury is not rare. It's happening every day and it's destroying lives and families. And instead of taking steps to fix this, our government is doing everything they can to cover it up. I urge you, no, I beg you to go see the movie back and not come out shocked, changed, and ready to join me in this fight for our children.